Hey everyone, Armin here from Hex. Today I'll be playing the role of a data scientist trying to better understand and efficiently utilize our marketing budget for this year. I'll be leveraging Hex's native Snowbark integration, Snowbark ML, and a stored procedure for our machine learning efforts. As we get started here, I'm going to create a Snowbark session using Hex's easy button. I'll recreate this cell by coming over and clicking get Snowbark session. You notice the same code gets populated and we can then leverage and piggyback off of our existing Snowpark connection or Snowflake connection, and then create a Snowpark session off of that. And I've done that off screen. Moving on, I'll query our campaigns table, which contains information like the start and end date of the campaign segment, and some analytical information like its ROI, campaign length, click through, and conversion rates. I'll query this actually as a Snowpark data frame, meaning that I want to return back a Snowpark data frame here that I will call campaigns. As I highlight over it, we can see, in fact, this is a Snowbark data frame. I'll then take that and join it with our campaign or user information. This contains uh, customer attributes like their age, gender, salary, et cetera. And most importantly, it actually provides me information that will be my Y or label class for our machine learning efforts. So the response column, whether a user has actually responded to a campaign or not, denoted as a zero or a one. That again will also be a Snowbark data frame. I can quickly get some visuals on this if I want. So if we look at campaigns data frame here. This is uh, actually being pushed down on the Snowflake side. The compute is happening and only the result set is being visualized in hex. So we, here we have a breakdown of the average ROI per segment. I can create some other visuals as well. But let's move on to some of our machine learning efforts that I want to highlight. I'll quickly do a null check using this user campaigns Snowbark data frame from above. I'll ensure our data types are the way we want them. And then I'll define our feature set here uh, with um, X columns that contain you know, age, gender, salary, and some categorical ones. And then our Y being the response column. Next, since I know this will be, uh, the data will probably be skewed in favor to users not responding to our marketing efforts, or the bulk of them will not be responding, I want to look at the breakdown. I mean, here we can see that about 83% of users have not responded to our campaigns, whereas 17% have. So this imbalance will probably affect our um, model. So we may want to consider uh, adjusting for that. Some techniques I'll explore later. Our pre-processing will include standard scalar and one hot encoding. For the numer numerical columns, I'll use the standard scalar. So we'll see how this affects these four uh, columns down below. And then categorical ones will use one hot encoder I'll run that. I'll utilize a helper function to ensure my case and the actual uh, naming of my columns matches Snowflake syntax or Snowflake best practices. Then I'll go ahead and save this uh, features table that has now been pre-processed uh, and I'll call it features and write it back to my Snowflake instance. When I go ahead and query that exact table, as I scroll over here, we can see the one hand coder did its job. We have the broken down state names uh, in their own respective columns. The same thing with the gender and the other encoded column names. And then the standard scalar ones like age, salary, customer, lifetime, right? They're all on the same scale at this point, ready for the model. Now, I'd like to address the imbalanced class, right? That we have within this uh, features data frame. And I'll do that by using a algorithm called Smote. And what this really does is just artificially take some data or insert it into the features um, table giving the model a 50-50 balance for our Y class, the responses. So what I can do uh, since this particular algorithm, right, this, this Smode library is not part of Snowpark ML, I can then go ahead and create a store procedure and have all of this actually running inside of my Snowflake warehouse. So to start with this, I'll first define a Python function that is going to uh, leverage the Smode um, uh, class here from imbalance learn library. I'll go ahead and perform it on the particular data set in question, the features one, and then I'll write this back to a upsample table in Snowflake so we have it if we want to recreate this or maybe do some analysis on it. Okay, I can then register the store procedure itself. So this is some code that uh, it registers a store procedure. You'll notice that we'll take this upsample function from above and we'll pass it in. I'll give a name to the stored procedure itself, and I've already gone and created this stage off camera. Um, that we can leverage. I can then call the store procedure. The session will Im implicitly be passed. So we'll use the context of the caller, AKA uh, the user running uh, the session. 
I'll define the uh, name of the store procedure and then I'll pass it that um, features data frame that we uh, worked on above. Then since this has been written back, I can go ahead and query the upsample features that the store procedure has written to my Snowflake instance. And now we are actually having what should be a balanced data set. So let's test that next. I'll run the same exact code that we did on the original features data set. And here we can see the Y class actually has a 50-50% breakdown. This ensures that our model won't be skewed or favoring basically our uh, majority class, which is users that have uh, not responded. Next, let's actually highlight the, this difference with some model training. So I've gone ahead and first trained a model that uses the original feature set, meaning the one that has not um, been run through this mode algorithm. So I've trained that ahead of time. As I scroll down, uh, I'll highlight the model training will be using the random forest classifier here. This is again an abstraction that Snowpark ML provides us, makes it very nice and easy to just run a few lines of code. Then we can see the result set. And what I'm really interested in is the actual scoring from this. So what I've done here is I looked at the precision, accuracy, or recall. I won't go into the details of what each of these do, but really the ones that we'll be caring about is precision and recall for this type of um, model training. So again, I'll be leveraging the Snowpark ML library to handle these uh, scoring for me. And we see that precision and recall is quite low. It's not really up to the standard that we would like it. And now let's go back and see if the balanced data set has an impact. So come back up here. I'll quickly change this. And I'll retrain this and be back in a second. Okay, I have now retrained this uh, model using the upsample data set. I've also done new scoring on it. So as I scroll down, using the same exact uh, scoring techniques, I can see that the precision and recall scores have greatly improved. And this is because the model isn't skewing towards the majority class and it has a balanced um, Y label, right? Users have responded and not responded at the same rate. Great. So now that we have our model that is looking much more production ready, we can look at grabbing some insights from it. I'll quickly change this model object to be a uh, scikit-learn one so I can leverage feature importances method here. And when we highlight this or we actually look to visualize it, this is telling us which particular customer attributes, right, uh, have the most impact on the model performance. So age, customer lifetime, salary, and campaign length clearly are the winners here. The location doesn't really make uh, much of an impact, and also the gender doesn't have much say in the model performance. Knowing this, then, we can take it the averages of those four categories where users have actually responded to these campaigns, and that can kind of be our starting ideal customer profile, right, for um, our marketing budget. So telling our customer or marketing team which users they should go segment and then target them a little bit more aggressively uh, to better utilize our marketing budget. I hope this was helpful in understanding differences between Snowpark and Snowpark ML. If you'd like to run through this whole project yourself, I'll link this down in the description below. Thanks for watching.